A warm welcome to all woodworkers and hobbyists and all those looking to improve the woodworking skills. The aim of today's workshop is to create a very special piece of furniture. We will be making a chair. But not just any chair, a real unique piece of art which is certain to catch the eye. We are going to show you how to make this masterpiece from the comfort of your own home using European nutwood. To do this, we don't need anything more than our strong and reliable bandsaw, a couple of hand tools and a passion for woodworking. The chair consists of nine individual components, the front legs, the armrests and the back legs, both left and right. Then the two-part seating support with hand-finished seat and the backrest. The individual components fit seamlessly into each other, giving the impression that the chair has been finished from a single piece of wood. The cutting plan can be downloaded free of charge from our website. Printing it out in its original size makes it easier to carry out the next steps. The plan can be amended to suit your personal ideas and can also be used for the making of and as a check of the templates which are used to make the back legs, the armrests and the front legs of the chair. The outlines of the templates are being cut extremely accurately using a knife. The cut-out paper templates are then pinned to an MDF panel and the outlines are drawn on in pencil. Using our hammer bandsaw we are now carrying out the rough cut. For the very tight radius cuts it's best to use a very thin saw blade like a 6 mm or a quarter of an inch. The roughly cut templates now need to be sanded to their final exact size. By using a sanding device instead of the upper blade guide, the bandsaw can be converted so that it can be used as a sander. Firstly, we will be using a flat sanding support to sand all of the straight edged components. Then, using the curved sanding support, the curved parts. Tight ready are then finished off by hand. The plan can be used to check your work so far. It's important that all the points where the components are to be fitted together match up. The more accurate the work now, the easier it is later to assemble all the components together. 
The outlines are then transferred from the templates onto the board as close together as possible to save space and reduce wastage. All of the following working steps will be carried out using our hammer. A 25mm or 1 inch saw blade is better suited for rip cuts than the 6mm blade. Firstly, the individual components will only be cut out roughly from the board. Afterwards, a little bit of finishing by hand is required. Precise parallel cut requires a perfectly flat reference surface. This can be done relatively easily using a bench planer. You can check the finish by using a steel rule. The parallel fence can be set to the desired material thickness, which in this case is 46 mm or just under 2 inches. And it's that easy to make two parallel surfaces. This process is then repeated for all of the other working steps. Straight cuts along the outside of the outer outlines help to give a better support surface when carrying out the parallel cuts. The chair legs and armrests are now cut to the exact thickness. The outlines can now be cut as close as possible to the final design. A 6mm or a quarter inch saw blade is best suited for this process. should always be used to check the work after each of the working steps are completed. The next step is about ensuring an exact flush finish of the connections between the individual components. Using the sanding device, the parts can be processed to ensure that they fit into each other. Even the outer contours are to be sanded.
Checking the final pieces against the original plan will confirm whether all the components have been cut correctly. The angle is right, all of the surfaces are flush and there are no visible gaps. Here you can see the carpenter's triangle being used. This ensures that all of the parts will fit back together in the right order. As the chair legs and armrests are to be rounded off by hand, it is advisable to cut the edges at a 45 degree angle. This makes the final processing of the parts a lot easier. As the next step is carried out without the use of a fence, a little bit of intuition is required. You must pay particular attention to ensure that the edges of where the seat will join with the backrest remain straight. Next step is to make the seat. The seat is made up of two parts that will be joined together later. The trimming cut is done along the pencil mark and the parallel cut using the fence. Also for this next step we need a flat planed reference surface. With a little bit of practice and patience it's possible to get the same kind of result using a hand planer as that what you get using a planer machine. Woodworking in its original form requires a little work with your hands. Both of the parts are to be cut upright to their final dimensions. With a cutting height of 31 cm which is 12 inch our hammer can be used for a wide range of applications. A table extension attached to the back of the machine makes it even easier to work on the machine. Parts will now be joined together. For a perfect glue joint, a little bit of processing by hand is required. The cutout paper template for the seat needs to be copied exactly onto the middle of the workpiece. The same applies with the cutting out of the seat and the seat profile. A reference line marks how much material can be cut using the bandsaw. By using the reference line, the table can be tilted to a negative angle. The workpiece can be run along the parallel fence until it almost reaches the back curve. You then need to cut freehand without the aid of the parallel fence. The same is done with the second part. This time the table is set to a positive angle. Doing the work now saves a lot of time and effort when carrying out the final assembly.
The two seat components can now be glued together. As the glue dries, the connection between the armrests and the chair legs can be started. It involves what are known as covered holes, which after the screws are inserted, are covered up using a wooden dowel. This method has the advantage that any tolerances or variances can be more easily covered up for. The drilling position can be set and marked using a pencil, ruler and protractor. And now the 10 mm blind holes for the dowel connections will be drilled. To ascertain the correct drilling depth, a simple bit of tape stuck to the bit will mark the correct position. Then a 4 mm drill bit will be used to drill through. In total 18 holes are required. Now the individual components can be connected using wood screws. After the seat has been cleaned, the outer profile can be cut using our hammer. A wide 25mm 1 inch blade is the right blade for cuts like this. Both side parts of the seat need to be planed flat using a bench plane. Now the cutouts for the legs can be taken out. The distances can be taken directly from the original side frame. The cuts are carried out at exact right angles. The depth of the cutouts equates exactly to the thickness of the material. Something to take note of. If the cutouts are also to be applied to the underside of the seat, then wider components can always be processed on the right hand side of the saw blade. Using the parallel fence, the width of the back legs can be set. The settings for the left and right leg are the same. The front legs are to be cut in three cuts.
then only the armrests need to be finished off. The sanding device is particularly effective for this job. Trimming so that everything fits into place needs to be done very carefully and in several steps. The corners need to be worked using a wood file and a sharp chisel. Once the parts fit into place, the armrests can be screwed to the seat. For the backrest, both the left and right lower edge will be marked. The backrest must now be worked to ensure that it fits exactly between the armrests. To do this, the following measurements need to be checked. The length of the lower front edge, the length of the lower rear edge, as well as the length of the upper front edge, upper rear. The middle will be sketched around the outside. The four measurements that have been taken can be halved and entered on the left and right hand side. The endpoints are then joined on both sides. Using a bevel you can calculate the cutting angle and set it correspondingly on the saw table. Fine finishing needs to be done once again by hand. For this we are using a special planer for end grain. Then the backrest can be provisionally screwed in place. But you need to keep in mind that the overhang at the back will still be slightly too much as it still needs to be rounded off. The side profiles can both be drawn on and the inner and outer curves can be transferred using the paper templates. Working with the bandsaw table set at an angle, both of the round pieces can be cut out.
obviously we are also going to round off the backrest on both upward and downward edges. The process is the same. Using a paper template, copy the profile and cut using the bandsaw. This is how it looks after the armrests have been shortened. That is also the end of the machining work. The next step is all creative handwork, lots of patience and shavings. The working steps so far and order in which they are carried out can obviously be adapted to how you see best fits your individual way of working. Even our own woodworker has his own chosen methods and tooling when finishing his work pieces off by hand. Using a 10 mm plug cutter, the dowels required will be cut from the nutwood. The chair is now glued and sanded. Finally, by using a boiled linseed oil for the oiling, a semi gloss finish is given.
that's it. Using the simplest of materials, our hammer band saw and various hand tools, we have produced a work of art in an incredibly short space of time. A truly unique piece that will find its place in every home. And you too could do this. You already have the most important tool required. The passion for perfect woodworking. Enjoy working with your hammer and all the best in making your own chair. <laughs>